Peace and welcome to Oddly Familiar. It's been a while, but we have a brand new episode. Today, we have a mixed bag, so be prepared for a little bit of everything. I am ICC, and this is Oddly Familiar, episode 46. Number 10. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the title screen theme. And here is Queen, Stone Cold Crazy. Our first up today was brought up by multiple viewers, and I missed this one until everybody brought it up. I played the game a lot growing up, and I have heard Stone Cold Crazy, but I just never made the connection. So this one is a shout out to everyone who leaves an oddly submission that we haven't got to yet. The Ninja Turtles game was first released in 1989 in Japanese and American regions and 1990 in PAL regions. So that's just 25 and 26 years after the release of the Queen song which appears on their album Sheer Heart Attack. Number 9, Bebe's Kids, Battle with the Giant Robot. And here is a snippet from the Malcolm X speech, dubbed Message to the Grassroots. The March on Washington. It's just like when you got some coffee that's too black, which means it's too strong. We covered this sample in a previous episode, and now it's back. Bebe's Kids is a game on the Super Nintendo that was released in 1994. It was based on the 1992 comedy film of the same name, which was actually based upon a stand-up comedy act by Robin Harris, which he also titled Bebe's Kids. This theme was composed by Paul Wilkinson. You may know some of his work from Rocky and Bullwinkle on the NES, or Terminator on the NES. The speech from Malcolm X was delivered on November 10, 1963, and was ranked 91st in the top 100 American speeches of the 20th century. It seems like people will rank just about anything. So tune in next week when we rank our top 10 baselines in gaming. In at number 8, Dragon Ball Z, Super Butoden, the title screen theme. And here is two in a room, wiggle it. Now this one I don't think was on purpose, but it made me laugh. Technically, it is possible the Dragon Ball game took influence because it was released in 1993 and the Two in a Room song in 1990. Arranged and composed by Kenji Yamamoto, the same composer from Dragon Ball Z Budokai. And that's a whole different story. But long story short, he ended up getting fired for plagiarism when the music he composed sounded like a bunch of really famous pop songs, including Earth, Wind & Fire, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and many more. I think this one is a coincidence, and here's a little mashup of the two just for kicks. Number 7, GoldenEye 007, Frigate. (laughs) 
So this one has two inspirations. First up is A View to a Kill by Duran Duran. Then we have We Care A Lot by Faith No More. So this one was brought up by a viewer. Scotty the Great One stated Grant Kirkhope was influenced by both of the songs. So we went to Mr. Kirkhope and asked him if it was true. I took a screen cap to show him and he said it is. So big thanks to Mr. Kirkhope for the reply and also a shout out to Scotty for bringing it up. It does make sense being influenced by the Duran Duran song of You to a Kill. It's the song that plays during the title sequence in the 007 movie of the same name. And in my opinion, it's a top five Bond intro song. When it comes to Faith No More, I don't know of any 007 connection, but listen to that bass line. And then listen to Frigate. You can hear the inspiration. And before we move to the next one, here's a quick example of the A View to a Kill inspiration. Number six, Gokujo Parodius. Run, run, run. And that's the William Tell Overture. Gokujo Parodius is a 1994 arcade game by Konami that was ported to the Super Famicom later that same year. You can also find it on the Parodius Deluxe Pack that was released on the PS1 and Sega Saturn, although those were only released in Japan and Europe. Last but not least, you can find it in Parodius Portable, a PSP Parodius collection that includes an enhanced remake of the original Parodius for the MSX as well as the PS1 version of Jikyo Oshabedi Parodius, while the other three titles are direct arcade ports. All of these games were only about 160 years after the premiere of William Tell in 1829. The William Tell Overture is now a public domain track, so if you want to make your own rendition, you can feel free to do just that. There are a few different ways a song can be classified as a public domain song, and the laws do change occasionally. But as of 2018, the Music Modernization Act states, sound recordings will enter public domain either 95 years after they were released or 120 years after they were recorded, whichever comes first. Five, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, Haybot Wars. And here is Terminator 2, the main theme. Conquer is a game well known for parody, and it has appeared in our oddly familiar series before. One of the themes was a parody of one from The Matrix, and another one was from Kill Bill. Simply put, Conquer likes to parody popular movies, and Terminator 2 did not escape. It got the Conquer treatment. Composed by Robin Beanland, a British composer who it seems has been busier than ever the last two years, at least when it comes to composing video game music. He has 15 credits to his name in just 2019 and half of 2020. So that's good to see him not only actively producing game music, but getting work consistently. We, as gamers, need to let these developers know not to skimp on the soundtrack budget. 
bring in someone quality, invest, and it will pay off. Four, Jurassic Park, Ocean. And here is Stranger Things, the main theme. Here we have a case where the game came out before the show. Submitted by King Shade One. This Jurassic Park game was first released in 1993, while Stranger Things premiered on Netflix in 2016. The similarities are hard to deny, the base on both themes sounds familiar, and the Jurassic Park theme has an added wind effect, while Stranger Things replaces that with a synthesizer. After all is said and done, I wouldn't be surprised if they took influence from the game soundtrack. Even if the game wasn't very popular, it's Jurassic Park and that movie was everywhere. So I am sure some people bought the game just because of that. Here is a little mashup. You can call it Jurassic Things in Stranger Park. Three, from the Sega Genesis, Cool Spot, Off the Wall. And here's Huey Lewis and the News, Back in Time. Being a huge Back to the Future fan, this one didn't take very long to figure out. First released in 1993, with ports coming all throughout 1994 on different consoles. For example, here is one from the Super Nintendo. The Genesis and the Super Nintendo arrangement were both done by Tommy Tallarico while the theme in the Amiga game was done by Andrew Barnabas. There is also one from the Master System and Game Gear, arranged by Matt Furness. Last but not least, we have the Game Boy version by Mark Cooksey. Number 2, Virtual Sonic, Robotnik's Revenge. That contains a sample from a song by The Meters. This Virtual Sonic song comes from an album titled Sonic Tunes Virtual Sonic. It features music from and inspired by the Sonic franchise. Multiple tracks on this album are exclusive to this release. You cannot hear them anywhere else. Released in 1996 with the work being done by Howard Drawson. You can find music from Sonic Spinball, Sonic and & Knuckles, and Knuckles Chaotix. There are a total of 12 tracks with a total runtime that is just shy of 30 minutes. It's one CD in a set of five, and the other four are Vector Man, Comic Zone, Toe Jam & Earl, and X-Men 2 Clone Wars. They are pretty rare and can be quite expensive especially if you plan on getting the entire box set. 
These three prices right here are not the asking price, but the sold price. And look at this guy down here charging $6 shipping when the item is $500. Really? Number one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Stage five. And here is the Beatles come together. So our number one spot comes from the same game as our number 10 spot. I recently found this one when we created our top 10 non-RPG overworld themes. Kratos recommended Stage 5 on TMNT NES. So I went to listen, and immediately I recognized it, but I had to think about who it was. I was thinking maybe the Rolling Stones and Paint It Black, but I knew that wasn't the correct baseline. So I started to think about just the baseline, and it clicked. That's come together. This submission is thanks to Uncanny X member Kratos. And while on the subject, I want to give a shout out to the people behind the scenes, Kratos and Egg. These two guys help me capture footage for our videos, or watching videos and screening for any mistakes, or any number of things that may pop up. Thanks for everything. This Ninja Turtles theme was composed by Jun Funahashi. I think the inspiration is pretty clear. I mean, the Beatles are only the biggest rock band of all time. So episode 46 is coming to a close and we have a quick reminder. Once we reach our goal, which is only about 4 or 5 patrons away, we will be sending out a random video game soundtrack every month to a random patron. If you want a chance at winning, head on over to Patreon. We will put a link in the description so you can check out all of the details. Last but not least, huge shout out to all gold level patrons, Bersona11, Quantum X, Chris Hayes, and Dimitri. I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.